drops, you know exactly what time it is. Welcome into the Blitz, and it's Rivalry Week, part one, before the Bucks head on a bye. I'm Evan Klosky, and joining me, as always, my dude who loves a good beignet, David Sheely. I kind of like bread pudding a little bit more than that, <laughs> but yeah, you know what's going to happen today? The boys from Tampa Bay, they trying to eat in New Orleans. We're going <laughs> to talk about Mike Evans facing his BFF, Marshawn Lattimore. We're going to take a deep dive into the Buccaneers' rushing attack, and for the first time, we're keeping it a buck, analyzing the players during the weekly press conference availability. Well, let's get this thing rolling then. This is the 10 and 10, the 10 most important stories you need to know entering this week four matchup against the Saints at 1 o'clock. The Bucks are looking to start a season 3-1 and one for the 11th time in franchise history. As intimidating as the Superdome is with all those loud fans, Tampa Bay has not done poorly there in recent memory. In its last six games, the Bucks have won half, including the playoff win and route to a Super Bowl title. But here's something crazy. These two teams have played 63 times. The Saints lead 39 to 24 in a series, and Tampa Bay has never won three straight against them. That could end today. And let's take a look at last year quickly because it was the first season sweep in 15 years against New Orleans, the week two game, uh, 20 to 10. The win was not pretty for the offense, but the defense forced five turnovers with six sacks. That will play, David. You need that. Now let's go to that Monday night game that happened here in Tampa Bay. This wasn't pretty either, but with 521 left in the game, Bucks on their own nine-yard line down 16 to three. Somehow Tom Brady led one of the most improbable comebacks in NFL history, helping the squad win 17-16. A fitting reminder that the Saints blew a 17 point just last week to the Green Bay Packers. Now let's move on to number nine where New Orleans is in a sticky situation at quarterback. Derek Carr is banged up with a shoulder injury, so it's possible for the third straight season Jameis Winston could start against his former squad. The Jameis! previous two have not been good memories for him. In 2021, he was playing great, but then he tore his MCL and ACL knocking him out for the year. Then in 2022, he didn't eat any Ws, mm. just sacks. Six of them to be in fact. As Evan mentioned before, he also threw three interceptions. The Jameis Winston special, as he threw 88 of them things in five years with Tampa Bay. The Jameis versus Bucks robbery is a fun one for us. I think Tampa Bay fans mostly have a soft spot for Jameis. As for Mike Evans, he has no soft spot nope. for Marshawn Lattimore. These two simply do not like each other. At all. It is on <laughs> sight. Last year was just the third bout between these rivals. Mike Evans said he was protecting Tom Brady, whatever that explanation was. Both of them got booted from that contest. Evans was suspended the following week. In 2020, Evans and Lattimore got into another scuffle, though the stakes were much lower. A bunch of shoving back and forth. A scrum ensues. Lattimore was given a flag on the play, and that was pretty much it. So 2017, was the, that's how this all started. Jameis Winston messing around with Lattimore. As one does. Evans doesn't really like what he sees, comes from behind and delivered what was unequivocally, you're going to see it here, unequivocally a Get cheap shot. Here. My goodness. Yeah, so Evans was suspended for a week for that as well. All in all, Evans has missed two games and fined north of $100,000 because of this matchup. He has to keep his cool today. Yeah, Griff told me that in my rookie. He said, go get Mike after every play. So... I'll have my hands full. Well, it, it was Jensen, too. So now, yeah, I got my hands full. I got to make sure everyone's all right. <laughs> Anytime you got two great players and they want to compete, both want to win. Both, you know, as long as they play within the whistle, that's fine. We don't want to hurt our team. I'm sure they don't want to hurt their team. So it's going to be a competitive ball game. Just keep it in between the whistles. Mike Evans doesn't have fun against the Saints for a lot of reasons. Since Marshawn Lattimore joined New Orleans six years ago, the future Hall of Famer has rarely popped off. I said future Hall of Famer. In 13 career games, Evans is averaging three catches for 48 yards per contest. In five of those 13 matchups, Evans has been held to less than 15 yards of offense. So Evans struggles against the Saints, but Alvin Kamara struggles against the Bucks. At number seven, the star running back returns for New Orleans after completing his three-game suspension. That stemmed from a fight the day before the 2020. 22 Pro Bowl in Vegas. In 11 career games against Tampa Bay, AK averages less than 45 rushing yards per game. He also has not totaled more than 80 yards against the Bucks in five straight matchups. The Saints definitely need him back, though, considering Taysom Hill is leading the squad with 91 rushing yards. But the Bucks don't have an excuse. Rashad White has 150 rushing yards, and many are wondering if he's truly a lead back in this league. Yeah, at number six, David, let's dig into this a little bit more because it's a fair question. Let's go back to week one against the Vikings. The Bucks are in the run zone, the red zone, I should say. And, and, and the run is supposed to go this way, as you can see where the arrow is. But look at the hole right here. 
This is the feel you want from your running back. You want to be able to see that it's right in front of him, and he only gets a few yards out of that. Now let's go back to last week, or Monday night, against the Eagles. Take this outside the numbers, but he curls it back and welcomes everybody on the Eagles. But it's not just Rashad White. Look at Hainsey just get blown up right here, and Rashad White can't do anything with that. This is one of my favorite plays, by the way. We got one, two, three offensive linemen hitting the deck. What is Rashad White supposed to do in that situation? That's so not his I'm fault. Not, I'm not here to say that Rashad White is for sure the number one running back on this team and for the future. But the offensive line has not figured it out either, and those two have to work in tandem to get this thing fixed. Mm, man, let's head over to our sideline segment. And here's the good news. You don't have to worry about anyone on the offensive side of the ball being hurt. But as for the defense, oh, buddy, this is not what you love to see. Now, we don't know who is officially out and won't know until 90 minutes before kickoff. But all of these dudes are banged up. Todd Bowles better be in his bag today because his boys need the bye week badly after this contest. Someone who is always in his bag is James Yarko, who joins us as always for the Locked On Bucks burning question of the week. And James, what do you think Bowles should do with his game plan considering how banged up the team is entering this rivalry game? I think given all the issues with the injuries, especially on the defensive side of the ball, Todd Bowles really needs to put an emphasis on getting after the quarterback. Derek Carr throughout the season has had an average of 2.2 seconds in the pocket. He's been sacked 11 times. He's been pressured 23 times. And although a lot of these injuries are on the backside of the defense, you can still get after him with guys like Greg Gaines, who kind of showed a little on the Monday night game against the Philadelphia Eagles. You still have Antoine Winfield Jr., who's been fantastic blitzing from all angles. Christian Isian has made some splash plays in really big moments, especially blitzing from that corner position. So the emphasis on the injuries in the secondary especially won't be as obvious if you are getting the quarterback uncomfortable against a very shaky New Orleans Saints offensive line. So Todd Bowles needs to do what Todd Bowles does, dial up a lot of pressures, disguise those pressures, and get after the quarterback, get them uncomfortable, force them into mistakes that this defense has been so good about capitalizing on. Thank you so much, James. Luckily, the Bucks still have this guy balling out and healthy at number four. Old reliable 54, Levante David, loved playing the Saints in 23 career games. Yeah, he'd been around a while. David has 185 <laughs> tackles, 20 TFLs, five and a half sacks, along with three forced fumbles. Levante will also make his 170th career start today. He's a bit banged up, but Devin White loves heading back to Louisiana, his hometown state, proud LSU grad. Devin White tackled, uh, tacked on his 11th career takeaway last week against Philly with an interception. He is just the third player in franchise history with at least 500 tackles, 20 sacks, and 10 forced turnovers. Rondé Barber is one, the other, the aforementioned Levante David. As for the other defense, set number three, the Saints are quite the unit under head coach Dennis Allen. You have to go back to week nine of last season for the last time. New Orleans gave up more than 20 points in a contest. They're also a top 10 rushing and passing defense. Bucks offensive coordinator Dave Canales is going to have his hands full today in just his fourth ever game calling plays. And hopefully Chris Godwin's hands are plenty full because at number two, he's been a bit underutilized so far. He's had clutch moments like in Minnesota, has excelled on third down, but he's capable of way more than 13 catches for a buck 41 and no scores. His franchise record 17 game stretch of at least five or more catches was snapped Monday night against Philadelphia. So with one, David, let's keep it a buck. That's where we take press conference sound and tell you what they really wanted to say. And let's start with offensive coordinator Dave Canales when asked about getting Chris Godwin the ball more. You know, I think it's honestly just kind of learning guys. You know, we had some near misses on Chris for the first two weeks. You know, that really could have been bigger days for him. We're, we're designing it to go to Mike and Chris. You know, nobody, that's not a surprise, and I can say that here. You know, we're designing our plays to do that. What Dave is trying to say is, look, I know how much money Mike and Chris are making. The days of me scripting passes for yeah. Co-Keep, they are over with. They are done. <laughs> I might have one of the best tandems in the league, and Chris Godwin, he's going to get his. His day is coming. So let's go to Tristan Wirfs next, commenting on Baker Mayfield and his infamous smack talking. Yeah, Bake's good at it, so. 
He'll probably he, he like he riles guys up, and then we got to go block him. I'm like, come on! I'm like, don't! I'm like, don't be doing that. <laughs> So what Tristan Wirfs is saying here is, Baker, yo, we got to keep it a buck. I appreciate your swagger, but you doing the most, bruh. You're taking off 300-pound men that want to tear you apart, and guess who got to block them? Me! I got to block them. Yo, chill out. I want no part of it. I don't want it. Last one, Devin White talking about his team after the ugly Eagles loss. It's one game, but it was a big game. I want to beat them so bad, but, I mean, at the end of the day, man, We'll, we'll see them again. We're in the same division. We're going to the playoffs. I keep saying that right now. So it is what it is. So let's keep it a buck. What Devin White is saying is I know we got our butts whipped. I know it. You know it. Oh, we all know it. My teammates know it. So let me overcompensate for this feeling and let everyone in the locker room know I want that smoke. We cannot lose confidence, boys. So let me take the media attention off of this loss. Say some spicy things. And everyone else, you just keep doing what you're doing. Refocus. And let's get at it the next week. That makes a lot of sense to me. All right, let's wrap this show up. We only got one game on 10 Tampa Bay. That's Vegas versus L.A. That's about as random as it gets for our audience. But that's not our call. The matchup kicks off at 4.05. As for our blitz pick records, both David and I picked the Eagles, so I'm still undefeated at 3-0, while David is like the Bucks, 2-1. Let's see if we differ today, and David, as the leader, I am going first, and, and look, with a beaten up defense, I am worried what that unit is going to be able to do today, so that means the offense has to step up, and I just do not know if they are capable of doing that quite yet. I want to pick the Bucks. But I'm going with the Saints by a funky 20 to 15 score. So again, I would like to pick the Bucks to catch up in the standings because you picked New Orleans, but I just don't see this team beating New Orleans for a third straight time, as we mentioned earlier in the show. I don't think the Saints have forgiven Tampa Bay for sweeping them last year. Actually, I know they haven't forgiven it. I think Jameis gets his revenge. 17-14 Saints win. All right, but you know, what do we know, right? What do we know? Uh, thank you for joining us on The Blitz. <laughs> Remember, next week we are off, just like the Buccaneers for a bye week. We will see you in two weeks for the creamsicle game against the Lions. I am Evan Klosky. He he is David Sheely. This is The Blitz. We will see you same time, same place in two weeks.